So, I mean, before starting with the slides, uh, you know, uh, the, the key thing that I really wanted to bring about was uh, uh, the whole idea of creating earnest.me as a platform is, uh, you know, institutions had a very different kind of access uh, to real estate opportunities, as we spoke about in the earlier. They've been able to buy the best quality real estate. Uh, you know, some of that is now available to us in the form of REITs. Uh, they have been able to do some very interesting uh, credit transactions where those transactions really generate fixed return of anywhere between 14 15 percent and and they deploy a full suit of monitoring uh, when they do those kind of transactions uh, at the time of going in there is a very extensive diligence very uh, sophisticated documentation and then then a fairly detailed monitoring uh, when uh, uh, once the deal is underway but but to most uh, domestic investors, that opportunity has not been there. Or even if it has been there, they really don't know exactly what they're investing into. They may just allocate to a fund and all that. And the whole idea about creating earnest.me was, is there a way to democratize that access to fixed return opportunities that institutions get? Uh, all our life and most of our team, and we'll talk about that a little bit, uh, you know, has done exactly that. We have worked for institutions or we have deployed institutional money in doing so. Uh, but even personally, we never had the opportunity to participate in that. And the idea was that, can we change that? Uh, can we make it a lot more accessible? So, so that was the thing. I think I mentioned about this uh, earlier in the last presentation also. I think one of the most important thing, and not only for what we are doing here and a lot of people on this audience, maybe financial advisors. Uh, so goes without saying that there is a, there is a uh, you know, uh, need or it's critically important to ensure that you know uh, who you are investing your money with, whether it is equity, whether it is debt, whether it is mutual funds, whether it is venture capital, whatever that is, that element you can't really take away. And when we think of digital platforms, many a time that is one aspect that does not get focused as well. Uh, but I think that's kind of important. Uh, and then, of course, whether it is scalable, how transparent it's, I think transparency is one of the other factors. So I think we have tried to keep some of these things in mind and marry that with where we think uh, we feel is the most compelling uh, opportunity from a risk reward point of view. And that's around that is what we've created. So I'll go through that. I'll show you a case study. Uh, I'll show you uh, something that's about to come about and, and just uh, open it up for, uh, quick questions if there is time. So first of all, let me just give a little bit of a background about who uh, who we as a firm are. Uh, our firm, which we call Certus Capital and Ernest.me is a platform of that. We started this firm in 2018. Before that, I used to head real estate lending business for KKR, which is a very large $400 billion plus global uh, investment manager. And prior to that, uh, I used to be head of acquisitions for Morgan Stanley India. Uh, where we had Obra Reality, Panchil Group of Pune, some of our investing companies, right? Uh, most of our team, so our team actually come from a similar kind of a background, KKR, Morgan Stanley, Kota, uh, Piramal, uh, you know, various different Deloitte and so on and so forth. And we'll go more into that. And over the last four years also, we have, we have advised global institutional investors in helping them invest or commit almost close to 10,000 crores. We have bid for uh, lending platforms. We have looked through more than 40,000 odd crore of loans. We hold an NBFC license. We hold an AIF license. And as you see, it is our, uh, is our platform that allows you to participate in secure debt, uh, which is secured against real estate. So, so that's just the background. Uh, I'm not going to change this slide. Just one sec. Can you see the... Arisha, yeah. if... Uh, we oh, can sorry. see... Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay, fine. I got it here. Sorry, I'm just struggling with this IT a little bit today. So this is just a bit of a snapshot of the team, but more than this. So this is really what it is. I mean, as a team, we have done almost three billion dollars more than fifteen thousand crore of investing this is where most of our team has worked so a lot of this team comes from core uh, financial services background uh, across real estate uh, mutual fund industry uh, you know etc consulting sovereign wealth funds and so on and so forth uh, 
But now jumping straight into the platform. So what are we really trying to do with earnest.me? You know, the point really what we're trying to do is there is a deep need of, uh, of financial, of debt for the real estate sector. Annual market, in our opinion, is close to $15 billion. And it is severely underserved at this point in time. And there are various different people who can participate in that. Of course, lending institutions have already participated, continue to participate in their own way. But this is the space, really, which have not had the opportunity to participate in a meaningful way or in a very transparent way. And that's kind of really what we want to uh, to uh, to solve for when we talk about uh, the start me. Uh, so, so really, what are we trying to do here? I mean, the whole thing is that if I'm an investor and I'm trying to invest my personal money, I have options on equities. I have had enough and more options on uh, VC kind of funds. Bank deposits is where a lot of money lies. Debt mutual funds are there. Double A and triple A bonds have been accessible, but but it leaves like if you want to really make more than ten percent plus uh, post tax return, you have to go to equities, or you have to go to these PCP funds. You really had very limited access uh, to uh, to fixed income instruments that can give you that, uh, which will give you regular pay and which is really taking away any kind of equity market risk, which. At an institutional level, enough and more of that happens. In, in fact, uh, private credit is one of the largest teams globally, even for institutions. And Ernest is actually trying to solve for that, provide that. Uh, there is, I mean, I would certainly say there is more risk than a AAA bond, but there is much significantly higher return. And, and that's really exactly where our team comes into play. Uh, whatever we invest into, we invest our personal money also. So there is a bit of an alignment in terms of what we're trying to do there. So that's kind of the positioning of what we're trying to do. So what do you really get as an investor? First of all, we are also investing in this thing. They are, they are made easy. You can understand them properly. Typically speaking, we are operating at 14 to 15% return. Most of those deals proper, uh, provide you quarterly cash flows. So you know, so quarter on quarter, you get interest. Uh, uh, over a two to three year period, they will, uh, they will uh, pay the principal back. And this is fixed. So you're really not taking a view on, okay, I'm buying a fractional portion of this building and this is going to sell at, uh, I bought it for 100 rupees, will it sell at 125 rupees? Or like if I'm holding it for five years, is it actually producing five year of five rupee of capital gain every year or not? If you're not doing that, whatever you're seeing here is what you really get as a fixed return. Uh, typically, a lot of these things are only available to ultra HNIs and HNIs with minimum ticket sizes of a crore or more. Uh, we have lowered that down to 10 lakhs. You know exactly what the underlying diesel before you do. And it's your choice to do it or not. So it's not a blind pool. You look at it and you make a choice whether you want to invest into it or not. Uh, so this is, I mean, without giving too much theory, I think we thought it will be much easier for, uh, for people to understand if we were to just say. So this is an actual deal that we just finished up recently. Uh, it was a 40 crore investment with a group which has 35 years of history. They have delivered 65 lakh square feet. You know, uh, the... Uh, what we invested into was covered more than 2.4 times in terms of future cash flow versus our investment. We have a fixed return of 16%, right? Interest paid, pays out quarterly. This was done in January. Two quarters of interest have already been paid out. And uh, we, as a team, also invested six crores out of this party. So, so, yeah, so we're a fair amount of participation that we do in that. And the minimum that one had to do was 10 lakhs. So, so how was the participation in this? You know, uh, what did we see? So, you know, this is uh, really, uh, you can see, this is just a summary of what we just talked about. But, uh, but now this is uh, fully sold out. But basically, 113 investors participated across the segment. You know, we had close to 80 investors between 10 to 25 lakhs, uh, you about 20 investors between 25 to 1 crore. Uh, 12 investors, more than one crore and so on and so forth. A lot of people directly participated on the platform, but also through distributors, right? So a fair amount of distributors actually showed good interest in this one. So I think, so that's kind of, you know, this just a, so effectively what you should take away from this thing is that, <clears throat> and Amar also mentioned on this thing, HNIs, multifamily offices, large institutional investors, and I'll come to that, uh, you know, have been, very actively looking at this thing. But this kind of an opportunity uh, has not been accessible to a much larger segment of investors. And that's exactly the mission of Ernest, 
that we should democratize that access and it should be a very, very simple. So, uh, so, you know, so it's very easy to see and what's going on. And then also what happens is that whatever, is hap whatever you have invested into, you have your own portal. So you know exactly how much you invested into, what you have to still invest, what's going on with the underlying project, what are your upcoming transactions, what are your documents. So it's just all digitally available uh, to you. And the entire investment process can be done digitally. Plus at the same time, our team is available to talk to you and help you understand what we're investing into. And here is an example of another transaction that we are, uh, we are about to close. Uh, we are in the final stages of evaluation and closure. Uh, again, a very advanced project in Pune, which will offer 15% fixed return, very strong cover, again, a very good counterparty, someone I've even dealt with during my KKR days. So the, the borrowers that we are dealing with, they have institutional background, you know, they have dealt with large institutions. So they're, they're used to dealing with institutions, they understand what their requirements are, and that's exactly how we run. So uh, all these th uh, things go through the same level of diligence and documentation that that will happen by a typical institution. That's why we say when you invest through earnest, you're really getting a, a similar kind of assessment and uh, and process that, that generally is available only to the institutions otherwise. I think this, uh, we all talked about it in the last session, but this is what I wanted to give a perspective on. It's not just that we love this thing. It is that all the major institutions, and you can see a lot of these people, they're all Indian HDFC code, Dirk ask, and these are all announced numbers or actually raised numbers. So they all have raised money or are actively deploying money to, uh, to, uh, to invest into this thing. These are all, this is all the money raised for investing into uh, residential segment largely uh, in the credit space. And it just is really uh, a perspective on uh, you know, uh, how smart money or how uh, institutional money is looking at the same opportunity that we are talking about at Ernest. So again, I, I spoke about it earlier. It's really a question of where you are. Also, to give you a stock market analogy, if you had invested in 2007 versus if you invested in 2009 in the stock market, just after the GFC, of course, the return that you would have made will be dramatically different. Market was at 22,000, it dropped to 8,000, right? And I think somewhat of that nature has happened with real estate credit over the last three, four years after ILFS, which actually didn't have anything to do with real estate. But when it defaulted, it created a problem for the financial services and lending institutions at large. And they, they stopped lending to, uh, into corporate loans, including real estate. So on one hand, the money dried up. On the other hand, the sector is doing very well. Most of the listed companies had their best year, real estate listed companies like Loda, Obroy, Etc. had their best year ever in FY22. And that's the kind of momentum they're seeing. And that is why a lot of this institutional money is actually chasing this kind of an opportunity. So, I mean, I already kind of talked about that, but here is just, I mean, I talked about how the momentum is, but this is uh, just, a, uh, you know, there's a lot of data here, but the basic takeaway is that some of the things, this is Q2, which is Jan to March, 2022, it has been one of the best quarters ever, right? And, and this momentum, despite the increase in uh, home loan rates, because RBI has raised the rates by about 1.5% over the last four months, but despite the home loan rates moving somewhere from 6.5% to close to about 7.5% uh, now, the momentum is continuing. Because, you know, in our opinion, and I think uh, uh, the chairman of Lodha on its earnings call recently kind of mentioned that, that up to eight to eight and a half percent, we still feel that consumers want to buy. COVID has only increased the desire of consumers to have their own homes and have it the way they want it, right? So, so most people are buying the home, the best home that they can buy. Yeah, enough and more people still have to stay on trend, but then also that home has to still be provided by someone. So, so I think, so net net, I, I, uh, I don't want to take uh, too much time into the, uh, going into the detailing of it, but happy to answer any question, but that, that just was a quick summary of what we're doing at Ernest.